Hey guys, it's Tanya with Scraptastic Creations. Today I'm going to create a couple of cards with you. And for the first card, I'm going to use the stamp set um, by Close to My Heart, Let's Party Card Making Workshop. And these blue pieces are metal dies. And I did prep some pieces, so I cut out two of these birthdays and I cut them out in candy apple red. And then I um, cut a couple pieces of paper. So this is um, a pattern piece of paper and it was from the um, Let's Party card, uh, the Let's Party um, paper collection. Uh, so you can just use whatever you have in your stash if you don't have this in your stash. But this piece is three and a half by four and three fourths. And then I have a background piece that is three by four and a quarter, and this is bluebird cardstock, okay? And then I have the Sundance cardstock, and that is three by four and a quarter. And then I have a piece of white daisy cardstock, and that uh, cardstock is two and a half, I'm sorry, uh, two and three fourths by four. So we have those pieces. And then I have the card base and I have a couple of um, glitter, uh, silver gems, okay? This is sparkles, okay? And then, or clear sparkles, that's what they are. So I got my pieces. I'm gonna bring in these balloons and these strings and I have them on a block already. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my candy apple red and I'm gonna start with this heart balloon and I'm gonna stamp that fairly high. So I'm just gonna bring that in up here and let that soak in for a minute. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to bring in the bluebird. And then I'm going to bring in the polka dotted balloon. All right. And then I'll go to the Sun Dance. And you can make these, honestly, you can do these any color you want. Even with this um, collection, this piece is so versatile. I'm gonna show you how versatile this is. So these are reds. And there's a, like a light pink here and then a green and a blue. So I'm gonna show you how just, I'm gonna actually, I wanna, I'm gonna angle this just a little bit, this balloon, cause it's kind of flying around and it's not like completely straight, right? All right, and then we'll go ahead and we will do our um, little tails. And you can just use whatever black ink you have. So we'll go here. Perfect. And then I'm going to bring in these ones. Make sure when you ink this up, like see how I got ink on here? Just take like a rag or something and wipe that off because you do not want to lean down and um, get that on your card that would ruin the front of this card and then you'd have to start all over and no one wants to do that so th for this I'm just gonna I'm gonna flip it this way just to make it a little bit different all right so close to my heart's cardstock is two-tone so you have the true side which is the dark side and then a lighter side so I'm literally just gonna glue this on here and then I'm gonna get my card base and I'm gonna glue this and the bluebird I'm going to use the darker side and I'm going to glue that right in the center and then I'm going to glue this here and then I'm going to glue this right on top of here okay I got that all glued down this goes together so fast you could mass produce this card in I mean like in no time you could just totally mass produce this um so I'm gonna stick this birthday here. And then I had stamped a little in that same um, bluebird. I stamped the wishes, that little banner, and then just kind of started cus cutting it out. And I, this is a little like dovetailed right here. And I just thought that this would be really cute instead of doing the happy birthday we could just stick this on there. And I did put a piece of foam tape on that. Now, let me tell you, I glued these two pieces together. 
And sticking just one here would have been just fine, but having the second layer here without using foam tape adds so much more dimension and there's no more lift, okay? It just really makes it stand just a little bit more off of the page and you wouldn't think so, but trust me, like especially if you have like a busy background, if you do that, um, just one layer, sometimes I do three, but just one layer just really makes a huge difference when you think something's getting like lost in, in your paper. Um, just by sticking that extra uh, thin cut layer down or uh, metal die, the second image just changes that. You can even do that with your stamped images. So it just like raises it. Okay, so stick this directly down here. Perfect. So then I'm just going to take this and stick this right down here. And let's do a little lower. Right in the middle. How cute is that? And then I'm going to stick a couple of gems on here. Bring in my piercing tool because they stick to my nails or my fingers even. <laughs> so I'll just stick one here. And then I'll stick one here. And then um, I like to work in odd numbers and kind of create like a little visual triangle there. Um, I think that's a little more appealing to the eye. So I have that like that when I do my gems and I have an odd number. So that's how quick that card went together. And you could stick a little sentiment on the inside or just, you know, do a lot of writing. But you could have a bunch of these made up and you saw how fast they went together and just pull them out when you need them. So let me show you this. I created that same card and I changed the paper to a pink. So you could use like, um, like raspberry or rosy ink or a deeper pink I used. And then I used my ballerina pink and you can, I mean this, there's red in there and it, you can't tell, it just looks like it just kind of matches that, that rosy color. It matches it and, um, it, it just looks great. So there you have it. Changed up the colors and um, it worked great. Okay, for this next card, we're going to create a shaker card. And I prepped some pieces for the sake of time. And I will tell you how I did each thing, okay? So I'm going to bring in this photo frame, okay? This is a thin cut of metal die. And we are going to make this into like a, um, a banner piece, okay? So I cut this out in the bluebird cardstock and then I used um, the dark side and then what I did was I turned it over and then I just measured the center and came up three-fourths of an inch and then drew a line with my arrow from corner to corner with a pencil okay just so and you don't have to you can just eyeball this and cut with your scissors right in the center and then corner to corner to, to create a banner, but I wanted it a little more straight. And then to prep this further, I just added a little bit of red score tape because I have a piece of acetate and this piece of acetate is three and a half by three and a half. So I have this acetate that I'm gonna use to make my shaker card, okay? And then I have a piece of white cardstock and this cardstock is three and a half by three and a half. And you can take any birthday sentiment and stamp it. But if you want to know exactly what I used, I used this one by Close to My Heart. It's your birthday. And I went ahead and used this piece. And um, all these blue pieces are metal dies, but I didn't use that. I just stamped it. And, and I colored it. So stamp it in an ink that's not going to bleed um, with your markers. I stamped this in intense black by close to my heart, but you could also use like memento. That would work great. Um, and then um, I also went ahead and cut my background piece. So I had my, I have my card base and then I have my background piece, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, and this is that same birthday um, paper. And then I have this, so this is just a scrap because I'm gonna show you like um, how I created all these little things over here. So I have some um, 
sequence and I chose the colors that were in this paper. I didn't want to bring in any pink. I just want this reds and blues. So I just pull out some different sequins from some different um, packs of my shaker, you know, shaker pieces. And then all these little sprinkles that are in here, I went ahead and this is how I created them. I brought in the candy apple, the bluebird, and then that same Sundance cardstock. And I literally just cut my paper and I cut little tiny little pieces like this and I created little tiny sprinkles, okay? So if you don't have a pack of sprinkles, I do have a pack of um, shaker pieces at sprinkles, but I thought this would be funner to create all the colors that I wanted specifically to match my paper. And you can do that with any um, cardstock uh, whatever whatever paper you're using, you can coordinate it to match yours, okay, and create these fun little sprinkles. So I, the first thing I'm going to do is glue my uh, background piece to this so it's ready to go. Okay, so whatever you're going to stamp in here, it could be a cupcake, a present, you just want to make sure that it fits inside your window, okay? So that's why I chose this one, I thought. And so this is my sentiment and, um, you know, the part that I put inside my shaker window. So let's cut this. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my piece of acetate and I am gonna get that right there centered on top of that um, window there. And then you just really wanna push that down and burnish that. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna bring in some foam tape and I am gonna put that over here on top of here because that is how our window is going to be raised up. Okay, so this is kind of important step here. I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in like an anti-static pouch. Um, See, so there's different kinds. You have, there's little pouches and I have this, I just happen to have this powder right here. And I'm gonna make sure I get um, all these edges on the side here because I do not want my sequins to stick to those and um, I won't be able to, you know, they'll they'll just all be stuck to the side. So I, I don't want them to stick to the the acetate, but I definitely want to make sure I, I put that powder down in here. So before I remove my sticky, I'm just kind of removing it from the sides here. That way there my um, sequence does not stick. Okay. I know that's... Trust me, I've done it and I didn't think to do that. And I always like to do it on the outside too because I just don't want something to kind of stick into it. I have not, <laughs> I have forgotten to do that step and all my sequins were like stuck in here. And so like I put my thing together and my it didn't shake, you know, and that kind of took away from, you know, what I wanted to do. So now I'm going to remove the um, sticky and then I'm going to stick my, and I'm going to make sure that my sentiment is going to be, you know, you want to make sure you do it the right way. So I am going to, let's see, I'm going to have it like this. So I'm going to stick it like this. And I'm going to stick that right down on there. And now I'm going to re-put some score tape on here. And the reason I'm going to use the score tape, because it's really, um, it's, strong grip. So I'm going to put in a, a little bit more score tape on here and then I'm going to stick this down here and I'm going to show you one that I did. It's kind of flipped this way, but this would be so cute. Like you could have totally, you could totally do it like this and have your um, sentiment up and straight up and down. Um, that would look really cute too. So let me get some score tape out. Okay. So I added some more score tape and now I am going to stick this, make sure my card opens the right way. I am gonna stick this. I don't wanna stick it in the middle. I'm gonna stick it on this edge and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna stick that here. How cute is that? So let me show you real quick too. 
So I went ahead and I used the, um, I used my um, Shin Han Art Touch Markers and I used my Golden Yellow and then Geranium. And that's how I colored these letters. So I wanna bring in a little cupcake, okay? And I wanna color that. I'm gonna bring in my Spectrum Noir uh, Tri-Blend, uh, tri my True Blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my Dark and just kind of give um, give this some color. I'm gonna go around here and we're gonna add a little bit of blending into this. And then I like to always go over like the, um, the, the lines that they have. Let's add a little bit of shading down here at the bottom. I'm gonna go in with the medium and I'm gonna go back over that. Now I do have one done already, but I want to show you, and there's a, and I'll, and I'll show you why, because it needed to dry a little bit. I'm gonna take that in with the light and just kind of blend that in. Now you can add more or less um, coloring, and I did go back over that because I wanted, um, I really wanted a little bit of shading in on that, so I did do that. So I brought in a yellow. This is my finished cupcake. All right, so I also brought that blue back in and I went over my candle. And so for here, I am gonna bring in the Stickles, um, the Moon Dust, and this is so much fun. Um, make sure you use like, like some, this is a cling, this is just cling. And I put that over there. It has this like little um, white piece here that's supposed to help keep it from drying out, but I found that it dries out faster and, and less. So all of my like paste or gels, I use this cling and that really helps. So all you're doing is adding, I just literally took this and I tap, tap, tap with my finger. Okay, so I tapped that all on there. And you can add as little or as much as you want. And it's a birthday, right? So I like a lot of like sparkle and glitter. This is why I made that ahead of time because it needed to dry a little bit. So I just wanna show you that real quick. So I love this stuff. And then I literally took my red, which was my candy apple, and my Sundance, the yellow, and then the bluebird, the blue, and I cut that and made sprinkles again with my paper. So I brought in my, um, this is a shimmer brush and it's honey butter, and this has some sparkle shimmer inside of it. And I wanted my um, candle to kind of flicker, you know, have a little bit of shine in there, a little bit of sparkle since it was supposed to be fire. So I did that. And these I added directly on here I didn't glue them. If you put these on here while this is wet and you just take your tweezers and stick them on wherever you want them, they, they're they stuck. Like It's like acts as glue. So I love that. So, so there you go. I had this one and then this is the one that I had made. I prepped ahead of time. And I am gonna stick that right here. So I added a foam tape here and some glue here. And then that way there, it will, you know, be the same uh, level. How fun is that? Ha, I could do this all day. <laughs> so the other one that I made, I turned this this way. So see, and like I said, you could have totally made it this way and I could have just put my cupcake standing here or standing here and it would have looked really cute as well. So those were super fun. And there's a trick on how to make your own sprinkles. Okay, for my last card, let me show you the pieces that I've prepped. Okay, I'm gonna create a slimline card. So I have my envelope and my card base. And then I went ahead and I took the Sundance cardstock, and I'm going to use the the light side. And this is three and a half by eight and a half, so it is the entire um, front panel of this. Um, and I'm gonna use this whole space, so. 
I there's that and then I took three of the pattern papers to that paper collection and I love this like yay and so this is not going to be a birthday card I thought it's almost graduation and so let's make a fun graduation card because yay you know graduation okay so these three pieces of paper are um three and an eighth by two and uh five eighths and i got two of those and then i did the sprinkle one the same okay yes the same yes the same okay making sure and then i have a piece of black cardstock and that cardstock is two and a quarter by seven and a quarter and a piece of white cardstock and that cardstock is two by seven and i went ahead and prepped this piece i'm going to show you what i did um this is celebrating and i got celebrating off of celebrating everything d2217 and i stamped that in memento and this is the the tuxedo black and this is really great for like you know if you're doing any kind of blending or coloring so it you don't your paper doesn't bleed and then I went ahead and brought in this stamp and it's uh, for the graduate. And um, this is like an old stamp, but uh, you might be able to find it or have something in your stash um, that has like some books on it and just some kind of um, graduation like little um, icons. So this is a C1836 if, in case you have it or you can find it. And so what I went, what I did was I stamped these books off and then I stamped them up here. I just stamped them off on just underneath a piece of paper. So these are all nice and dry. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to glue this to my black cardstock. I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue. And just, I always tell everyone less is more with your liquid glue because you do not want to have, um, you know, your ripply um and trust me this will be stuck so i just want you to see like this barely any there it's just real like real beaded thinly okay and then i'm just going to stick this i know you probably can't see this because here let me move it because it's black on black but just stick in this and it has about an eighth of an inch all the way around perfect and now i want to bring in my blue bird and i'm going to bring in a blending brush and i just want to I, I don't want any um really like like dark spots on this so I'm gonna bring in just this little tiny scrap and I'm just gonna tap off on it and then I am just gonna blend this in all the way around here just adds a just a little touch of detail and it's gonna make it just just coordinate just a little bit better we're gonna do another little fun thing too so you can do as much of this or as little and i like to do nice little circular motions let's get a little bit more over here by this c perfect i love that okay so the other one i made is just a little bit lighter and remember your inks will dry a little bit lighter okay so that's the first step to that now I'm gonna bring in some markers and I'm bringing in that same uh, golden yellow and that same um, red, but I'm bringing in, instead I'm bringing the true blue shades in and I'm gonna use the light side of that. It's a little bit darker than the true blue, true blue blends. So I'm gonna use that. And then I'm also gonna bring in um, a black marker. And instead of a marker, because I'm gonna do real thin lines, I'm actually gonna use my journaling pen and um just do like the little book bindings because i'm gonna do real thin i'm just gonna do um i'll show you okay okay so i'm just gonna make a couple of these yellow so i can tie in all the colors and then we'll do this one yellow so then i'm gonna bring in a little bit of red as well I have a daughter-in-law who's getting ready to graduate from college. So I thought how fun to make a card and give her that card. And I love that the, the birthday paper was just so versatile that you could, you know, make it um, anything you wanted, honestly. But I love that sprinkle paper. I thought that was super fun, you know, to work with. 
Are you guys scrapbookers, card makers, or both? I am both. Although scrapbooking, it, I enjoy scrapbooking a little bit more than I enjoy card making, but I absolutely love making cards as well. I just like, I just love just the completed page of a scrapbook and I can add it to like one of my kids' albums or like a family album and, um, but I like making cards too. Okay, so I'm bringing in that journaling pen and I'm just gonna take some of these books that are gonna have like the black binding and just because it's just a little thin little piece, I'm just gonna use this journaling pen to do that. And instead of like using my marker and maybe <laughs> messing it up. Okay, so for another little detail, I'm just gonna bring in my all-purpose mat and then my black shimmer just to give it a little bit of splattering. And I'm just gonna use this tip here and I'm just adding a little bit of um, splatter. And on the um, cupcake card, we use the honey butter, so the yellow and colored with it. So this is just a little something different you can do with like shimmer brush. And you can add as much of these or as little as you want. I just like that fun little extra like splatter detail. I think that's super cute. Okay, now I wanna do a little bit of ink distressing around these pieces. And I'm just gonna do this real quick. Just gonna make that pop up off, pop up off the back of that. Um, you can go ahead and do this with a, a blending tool or with a sponge, but I just want a little bit just to kind of make that stand up. You see how it just makes like a difference, you know? So I can put this piece of paper here and here, I'll show you this one real quick. I won't make you watch all of these. I know you don't wanna watch me do this to all these pieces. Although listen, this is so fast. I mean, doing it like this, I mean, and I'm even gonna do, see the difference? And so I like that. And I'm even gonna do um, this black piece because it has like a little bit of white core. Um, I love this white core cardstock, but it's great for sanding. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna lay these pieces out about an eighth of an inch. Um, apart from each other and around the sides and the top and the bottom and glue those down. Okay, so we'll just glue these down and then I'm going to put my um, sentiment, this piece right here, I'm gonna put that directly in the center on this and I'm gonna glue that flat down. You see how adding that ink on there and that little bit of splatter just really um, brought that to a whole nother level. I love that. I think that's so cool. And then I'm going to, so these were the, these were the little um, icons that I had cut out and are stamped. I stamped in black and I'm going to stick this one. Let's do it like this. I'm going to stick this one right in this corner and then we'll cut this one out and in case you're new to card making or scrapbooking, um, when you cut like an image, if you leave a little bit of a white border around, it just looks a little more, it's more forgiving. So if you, you know, if you don't cut it absolutely perfect, um, it just, and it, it looks a little more professional, you know? So that's just a tip. And then also don't like open your scissors, cut, cut, cut turn the paper, you know, turn, turn this when you cut and then you don't want to just keep doing this, you know, um, turn, turn your scissors. I kind of leave my scissors straight where they are. And then I just turn my paper and cut that way. And then it just, it's, it's just a lot nicer of a cut. Okay. So I'm just going to actually add some glue onto here. Here's where I stamped it the first time and I didn't like the way it came out. So I just flipped that over and re-stamped that. No big deal, right? So I think we'll just have this kind of going right in this corner, right over top of these books and this right here. How cute is that? I actually wanna move that in cause I don't want that to come off of, off of the corner here cause I want it to fit in my envelope. Cute. And then we'll stick this down here. I love this. I love how this came out. This is so cute. And then honestly, we could even go a step further and oh, just so you know, this would be an awesome, um, if you add a little piece of paper down here 
and fold that in. This would be like make a little pocket. This would be a really awesome place for some money for graduation, or you can put a gift card in there. But if we want to take that a step further and we want to bring that other stamp back in where we got the celebrating and bring in this your graduation. So that could be stamped literally right here. And I would stamp that in black and you can always come in and add a little bit more of that blue right here and do that. So that's just another idea. So let me bring those cards back in for you. I hope that you enjoyed this process video and maybe you learned a little something. I could just keep doing this, right? <laughs> and um, if you're looking for more inspiration, check out my next video. Till next time.